So I guess the bottom line is though each one of these superstar functional mushrooms has different things that characterize or different superpowers that it has. So real quick hit again, Lion's Mane is a brainiac, Turkey Tail is def the defender, you know, Reishi is the wise and calm one, Cordyceps is the energy mushroom, Chaga, the king of medicinal mushrooms. So welcome back to another episode of Mushroom Coffee. This is the weekly show where me and Tegan talk about mushroom supplements and all things mushrooms. Uh, but what we really want to do is connect with the mushroom community. So again, this is episode two and Mushroom Coffee is going to be published every week at 11 a.m. Uh, 11 a.m. Mountain Time right here on YouTube. Uh, and we're going to try and do this every single week. But again, this show is about connecting with the mycological community, connecting with the fresh cap community. So we do for sure have a topic that we're going to talk about today, yes. which we're really excited about. But I did want to know, you know if there's anything that you want to know about mushrooms, about mushroom supplements, about fresh cap, anything, let us know in the comments below or hit us up by, uh, you know, sending us an email to support at freshcap.com or connecting with us some other way. Because really we want this to be somewhat interactive where we can hopefully answer any questions you might have about the wonderful wide world of mushrooms. Yeah. yeah. So let us know. So let us know. Let us know. Um, and thanks so much for being here at uh, episode two of Mushroom Coffee. But so the other thing I want to talk to you about today in other news is we did just launch yet another mm -hmm. show. So we dropped mm -hmm. two new weekly shows. Uh, this one is Mushroom Coffee, where we talk about mushroom supplements, et cetera, connect with you guys. But the other show is called The Mushroom Show, and that's for kind of longer deep dive conversations with some of the movers and the shakers in the mushroom space. And that show, the first episode launched last weekend. It's an awesome show with Eugenia Bone. Uh, she's super great and super dialed in into mushrooms. You've probably heard of Eugenia Bone, but if you haven't, she wrote a book called Mycophilia. We talk all about the book, about her appearance on Fantastic Fungi, about some of the cool stuff that she's doing in the mushroom space. So for sure, without a doubt, if you want to check that out, it's on our YouTube channel. And it's also on Spotify if you just want to listen because it's uh, audio experience mostly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're super excited about um, about that. So again, two yeah. new weekly shows. The Mushroom Show is going to be every Sunday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time and Mushroom Coffee is going to be every Friday at 11 Mountain Time. So we hope you enjoy them. Yeah. Tune in, like, subscribe. All that good stuff. <laughs> so let's get into the main topic. What are we going to be talking about today, Tegan? Ooh, today we're talking about stacking mushrooms and synergy among different mushroom species. Yeah. yeah. So why don't we get into it? Why don't we get into it? So what is stacking? I guess, you know, so every medicinal mushroom has kind of its own characteristic. Every functional mushroom has its own characteristic. And I like to think of them each as kind of having their own superpower. But of course, a lot of people use these different mushrooms together because mushrooms can act synergistically. They have different benefits that people want to stack on top of each other, which is why it's called stacking. And it's actually one of the really common questions that we get here at Fresh Cap is, hey, can I take this mushroom with this other mushroom? Or can I take things together? Or is that a common thing to do? So the answer is absolutely 100% yes, it is a common thing to do. It's totally normal and lots of people stack it. But we wanted to talk about some of the, you know, some of the intricacies about stacking mushrooms or using different mushrooms together synergistically. Yeah. So the first thing we should talk about, though, is the fact that uh, different mushrooms have different characteristics. Yes. So why don't we go through just really a quick hit on, say, the six or seven main superstar functional mushrooms and what the main characteristics is that they have. And then once you know the main benefits, you can really determine what you're looking for and what stack might work best for you in your daily life. So why don't we start with lion's mane? Lion's mane is known as the brainiac mushroom, really good for cognition, memory, focus. So lion's mane is that go-to mushroom if you're looking for something to help with your mental clarity your focus, and just day-to-day -day working tasks. Exactly, yeah. No, lion's mane is probably one of the most popular of all medicinal mushrooms right now. A lot of people are using it. You're seeing it in a lot of different, uh, not only lion's mane by itself, but you're seeing it show up in coffee and all these mm -hmm. different functional products and uh, often sometimes stacked with other things that aren't mushrooms, but we can talk about that. But um, yeah, you might've heard about lion's mane for sure. It's uh, one of the most popular of all medicinal mushrooms, like Tegan said. It's the Brainiac. The Brainiac. I have a, a focus right now, and that is our little blend of lion's mane mushroom and Numentix, which is a clinically studied spearmint extract. Nice for a caffeine-free boost in the afternoon. Yeah, so that's a stack yeah. in and of itself. A stack in and of itself. Okay, so lion's um, mane is the Brainiac. Brainiac. Why don't we do turkey tail? So turkey tail would be commonly known as the defender. Really good for immune system and overall general health and well-being. 
Yeah, turkey tail is one of the most studied mushrooms in the world for specifically for modulating and supporting the immune system, super highly packed with fungal beta-glucans or immune supporting fungal beta-glucans. And that's why turkey tail mushroom is kind of known as the defender and it helps you take down whatever's trying to take you down. <laughs> and uh, it's for sure one of the most popular mushrooms in that regard. Next up, we have a reishi. reishi. Now, reishi is kind of known as the mushroom of longevity. Uh, it's called also uh, the spirit mushroom because it's very calming. So that's kind of the character that reishi has. I've also heard it called the mushroom of deathlessness, oh. which I think is a little bit ambitious. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but reishi for like sure, uh, not only is really good for supporting the immune system, but also is a probable adaptogen. And it's kind of known as like the wise one, the calming one, the spirit mushroom, and is, is often used for sleep and for calming. Yeah, um, and es especially when those adaptogenic properties come through, it will help your body adapt to stress and really just decompress. Exactly. Now, the opposite end of that spectrum is cordyceps. Now, cordyceps is kind of known as the energy mushroom or the athlete's mushroom. And it's typically used for energy and endurance. That is what it's been studied for a lot. Um, but that doesn't mean you necessarily have to be an athlete to use cordyceps. In fact, actually, you know, this research has shown that the energy supporting properties of cordyceps are even more prevalent in uh, people who are not elite athletes. Yeah. So, and the energy boosting effects are different from something like caffeine, which is an immediate stimulant. This is something that's used consistently over time and it helps your body increase oxygen utilization, increase overall endurance and energy. So when you take it, you might not have the same energizing effects immediately like caffeine would, but when used long-term, it's very beneficial for energy and endurance. Perfect. Also good for lung health. Yeah, yeah. which kind of ties into it, right? Yeah. I mean, if you, if you got good lungs, you're gonna have better energy, better endurance. Right. So it kind of makes sense. Um, next up is chaga. Now, chaga is kind of known as the king of medicinal mushrooms, even though technically it's not really a mushroom, but we can definitely get into that uh, later, maybe in another episode. But chaga, as you can see, well, I don't know as you can see, but it's super high in, in antioxidants uh, because, of, because of this stuff on the outside. Um, and it's also just kind of the overall do it all mushroom that's good for supporting the immune system and many other things. So chaga, the king of medicinal mushrooms, think of it as the, the antioxidant support and they're really the do it all mushroom. Cellular health. Cellular yeah. health, detox, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, okay. Next up we have maitake. Now maitake is a little bit hard to characterize, not as easy as the other ones are to characterize because it is another one of these, you know, holistic, lots of different benefits of maitake. One of the things that's neat about maitake is it's one of the few that's both a gourmet medicinal mushroom, or sorry, a gourmet delicious mushroom. It's great if you can get it in the kitchen. Yeah. It's delicious. You can use it in all sorts of different meals, but Absolutely. it's also a powerful medicinal mushroom. The thing that characterizes maitake is a lot of people will use it for like blood sugar regulation, all that kind of stuff. And then that's what it's been studied for a lot. Yeah. And if you can find these at the farmer's market, are you growing them yourself? Delicious in the kitchen. Same with lion's mane. So, but yeah. Yeah. These are probably Choice. the two hardest working mushrooms, right? Because yeah. they're both gourmet. Medicinal and gourmet. Delicious gourmet. Yeah. Wine's made easy to grow. Matake, not as much, but uh, that's another thing that characterizes it. Another one that we, we don't have right here, and we actually don't have a product with it, but would be Tremella. Right. So Tremella is really good for skin health and increasing um, moisture content in skin. I've heard. Yeah. It's used in a lot of skincare products. Very interesting mushroom. It's known as the beauty mushroom, right? Yeah, so that makes sense. Skin health. And there's been some research for Chamella as well in terms of brain health. So it's sometimes called like the rejuvenating mushroom or the mushroom of youth, right? Um, so, so I guess the bottom line is so each one of these superstar functional mushrooms has different things that characterize or different superpowers that it has. So real quick hit again, lion's mane is a brainiac, turkey tail is def the defender, you know, reishi is the wise and calm one, cordyceps is the energy mushroom, Chaga, the king of medicinal mushrooms. Aitake, a little hard to characterize, but good in the kitchen. <laughs> and uh, and Tremella, which is the beauty mushroom. And of course, there's lots of other uh, functional mushrooms. Those are just kind of the main ones that we like to characterize. Um, but again, the bottom line is basically no matter what goal you're trying to achieve, no matter what health goal you're trying to achieve, there's very likely a mushroom or a combination of mushrooms that is gonna help you get there. And that's kind of the what we're trying to get at with the different characterization of these different mm -hmm. functional mushrooms. Yeah, so when you identify what need you're looking for, and those needs might change through the months, through the weeks, um, you can rotate through different mushrooms, creating different stacks, really individualize and tailor it to your needs, specific needs. 
Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Super cool. So before we talk about combining different mushrooms or using different mushrooms together, aka stacking different mushrooms, let's talk a little bit about the timing of mushrooms, when to take those mushrooms, because people aren't only wondering what mushrooms to take, but also wondering if it matters what time of day they take them or what time of year they take them or should they cycle them, etc. Right. And I'm going to mention this before we go into it, because everyone will respond differently to natural supplements. Not everyone's going to fit into the same routine or interact the same way, taking at different times a day. So it's really great to listen to your body and how you interact, because it might be different from person to person. What is the ideal best routine? Just want to say that before. So exactly. what we say, don't, don't take it, but listen to your body and see how you react. Yeah, everyone's a little bit different, right? Because yeah. like in general, there's not as many acute benefits of mushrooms. They more so act over time, but a lot of people do experience acute benefits, acute meaning kind of like fast acting, right? right? So for example, you know, some people will take cordyceps right before they work out because it's kind of like a pre-workout, whereas other people will take cordyceps for a period of two to three weeks before they notice the energy and endurance benefits. Same thing with lion's mane. Some people will notice the, the benefits kind of right away. And some people will notice it after a few weeks or so. And some people will notice the benefits a lot stronger, while others might feel a little more subtle, but you can tell underlying that it's there. Um, So it really is just individual how your body responds. So in general, it doesn't matter what type, what time of day you take the the mushrooms? I I am going to say no, (laughs) because everyone will respond differently. You know, if you're taking them in morning, because you do find cordyceps has an energizing effect, would be best to take it in the morning. If you take it at night, you know, something like reishi, because it has a calming effect. Um, So there is no set standard as to when you should take mushrooms specifically. I haven't seen a lot of research pointing out, this is the ideal, take it here, take it there. What do you think? Uh, I agree. Um, I do like to take cordyceps as a pre-workout because I do kind of notice. It is in your pre-workout. It is also in my pre-workout. Your favorite pre-workout has cordyceps in it. It does. It also has a little bit of caffeine in it, which helps. But also I have taken cordyceps just um, alone, like without, like without all that other stuff, just as a pre-workout, literally just mixing it up a bit in water and it does make a difference. Whereas, you know, you take cordyceps before you go to sleep. Mm-hmm. and it doesn't affect your sleep. It does not like affect that. my sleep. Yeah. But I have heard from some people that it will affect their sleep. So very individual. Yeah. yeah. I personally like to take reishi uh, before I go to sleep sometimes. And like, again, when I was really trying to dial in my sleep during certain periods of time, I was taking reishi every night for maybe a month and a half or so, which really helped, but not taking it all throughout the year. And, you know, for example, too, the time of day matters, but some people will, for example, take turkey tail only in the fall because they want to support the immune system the most as the winter season is coming on and stuff like that. So, And that also goes to talk about cycling through different mushrooms at different times. So I've, I've heard some people say it's a lot more beneficial if you take a mushroom for a set amount of time and then take a break from it. Maybe while you're taking a break from it, switch to a different one. Um, so that is also another topic that is up for debate. I've seen some people take mushrooms straight through with no breaks and I've seen the cycling, which yeah. has been beneficial too. Well, that's like not uncommon, right? I think with a lot of different supplements, you can have cycling. Like I know, or like creatine, for example, something that bodybuilders use and they cycle it, right? They take it for like eight weeks and then they don't take it for like four to six weeks or something like that. So it does make sense to kind of add those cycles. And again, everyone's going to be a little bit different in terms of what they're trying to achieve. So it really is a very personal thing. Yeah. And that kind of goes right into my daily routine. So what I like to do personally, which works for me, is I take Thrive Six pretty much every day in my morning tea. And then depending on what I'm feeling, I will take cordyceps for a few weeks or switch that up to lion's mane for a few weeks or maybe change that up to even the focus beverage. So I do make different stacks depending on what my body's feeling and what I feel like I need. And then I switch those out so I don't do a set one forever, but I'm constantly changing based on what my body feels like it needs. Yeah. And that is one of the things that's so cool about mushrooms, right? Because each different mushroom, again, has its own different characteristics. So you can use it at different times for different use cases. Um, right now, I've been stacking the cordyceps. Yeah? Yeah. So I do a gram of the Ultimate Mushroom Complex blend in the morning. And then I do two to four capsules of cordyceps in the afternoon. That's what I've been doing right now. What have you been doing right now? Um, I like to do a lot of drinking the mushroom coffee. Yes. The last little while, which has lion's mane and chaga in it. Um, and yeah, I like to take the cordyceps as well. I've been taking cordyceps in the afternoon, which is really good. But some people also like to take mushrooms without food 
That's yeah. another thing is like, do you take it with food or without food? Right. That's a question we get quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And what should you do? And again, yeah. it really depends. Like some people find that, and you know, there is some, some good reason behind this that, you know, if you take it without food, you know, there's nothing that might interfere with the absorption of the potential active compounds within the mushrooms, beta glucans, for example. So in general, it shouldn't matter if you take it with food or without food, because some people will say, well, if you take it with food, then your digestion is working better and it's better to absorb. So again, it really depends on, you know, human physiologies. Complex. Pretty complex. <laughs> so it can depend on a million different things. So the bottom line is um, it shouldn't really matter if you take your mushrooms with or without food or different times of day or whatever, but um, everyone's different. Everyone has a different personal preference. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Why don't you let us know in the comments below if you've noticed any difference or if yeah. you use mushrooms, what your, what your routine How, is. What your like routine sharing. looks like. I'd love to know. Exactly. Um, why don't we talk about some of the most common stacks that we've seen? Yeah. So yeah, that's fun. Obviously the most common stack that we've seen is just like taking a total blend of mushrooms. Yeah. So for example, we have the ultimate mushroom complex, which is lion's mane, cordyceps, reishi, chaga, turkey tail, and maitake. And there's an even dose of each, uh, perfectly evenly blended. There's lots of different blends of various mushrooms. You know, there's four mushroom blends and 10 mushroom blends. And seven. But basically what it is, is it's kind of, you think of it like the multivitamin of mushroom supplements. It has a lot of the different benefits of mushrooms and mushrooms are adaptogenic. So it should allow you to kind of get those benefits that you need in a very even way. And they can work synergistically together. Right. Right. So, and that is by far the most common stack. It's just yeah. like people are like, okay, I don't know exactly what problem I'm trying to solve, but I know mushrooms are, you know, have all these benefits. So I'm just going to go for all of them, take my mushroom multivitamin. And uh, again, that is a very common thing to do. And a lot of people get a lot of, a lot of benefits from that. And an easy stack because usually they're blended all together for you. Right. So, and so we do have this one here. This is the ultimate mushroom complex. Again, it's maitake, chaga, turkey tail, reishi, cordyceps, and lion's mane. And it's a even blend of oh, it's a new one. all six new of those one. mushrooms. This, one's, this one used to be called Thrive 6, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that, but we did just recently change the name from Thrive 6 to fresh new look. the Ultimate Mushroom Complex. I love it. It has a fresh new look. Yep. It's no longer dark and scary. It's bright and green. So Teal. I teal? Think teal. Yeah. I think that's teal. Well, maybe not blue. I don't know. What is it? Leave us, drop a comment. What <laughs> color is that? I don't know. I do Teal. like it a lot. I love it. It's yeah. fresh. Yeah, so it's really nice. The, the powder hasn't switched over yet, but it will be switching over the next little while. So yes. keep your eye out for that. Yeah. Second um, most common stack would be? Well, I think the second most common stack if is people will take a blend, yeah. but then they will layer on a mushroom that they're most looking to get the benefits from. Right. So it's like you get the foundation from a blend and then you're saying, okay, well, I want the cognitive benefits most. So I'm going to take a blend of mushrooms plus I'm going to take lion's mane. Lion's mane is in the blend, but you get more lion's mane if you take lion's mane on top of that. So be that extra boost of the benefits from lion's mane. And I've seen that done a lot too. So with the blend with lion's mane and then the blend with cordyceps, I think those are the two I've seen most commonly done. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, and I've seen it with I've seen it with reishi quite a bit too. Mm -hmm. Reishi is kind of this, yeah. Again, it's a probable adaptogen, and it might even help kind of get more of the benefits out of the other mushrooms as well, just because it makes your body more adaptable to them. Yep. So that's a really common one as well. And speaking of adaptogens, another really great stack would be the adaptogen stack. So you would take cordyceps and reishi, and right. if you wanted to take them at separate times, you could do cordyceps in the morning and reishi at night, just to focus on those energizing and um, de-stressing compounds, relaxing compounds. So that would be another great stack too, the adaptogenic stack. Right. Actually, I have heard that. People take cordyceps in the morning and reishi at night. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know what an adaptogen is, it sounds like one of these kind of like made up terms, right? Like an adaptogen, it just it does everything. But an adaptogen is actually like a real scientific term. And basically, um, it's, it's something that helps your body adapt to stress mm -hmm. and helps your body better deal with stress. And also, you know, adaptogens are able to kind of help you, like whatever your body needs, it can kind of help figure that out, right? Like it will adapt to whatever it is that you, you need the most. And um, out of all the mushrooms, people think like most functional mushrooms are adaptogens, but cordyceps is definitely an adaptogen. Yeah. Reishi is known as kind of a probable adaptogen. And it takes a lot of vetting for a natural product to gain the actual status of an adaptogen. And so there's a lot, 
of studies and a lot of research that has to go in to prove that something is a true adaptogen, Cordyceps does have that. And Rishi is is on his way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a really high bar to pass, right? Yeah. Just like being a medicinal mushroom, being a functional mushroom is a really high bar to pass. Being an adaptogen is another high bar to pass. I've, but, uh, I've heard a lot of people calling a lot of things adaptogens without yeah. um, just calling things adaptogens is just for the fun of it. So, but yeah. There yeah, the term gets used pretty loosely, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's not a loose term. Uh, what would be the, if someone wanted an immune stack, what would you stack for like an ultimate immune stack? So the most common, I mean, that is the one thing, not all mushrooms are adaptogens, but right. probably all functional mushrooms are immune supporting, right? Because they all yeah. have fungal beta glucans, but we all know uh, that the most powerful of these, or the most obvious one for this is turkey tail. So an immune stack would definitely want to include turkey tail, mushroom, and that would be the number one thing that you want to have in your immune stack. But another common one to add to that is something like chaga. So turkey tail and chaga together are a powerful duo for supporting the immune system. Nice. Yeah. I like it. Now, I, I know like when you look at a bottle, it's suggested serving is one gram. And that is a guideline. Um, a lot of people will reach out saying, but if I'm combining them, how much can I really take? And what we suggest is... Most people commonly take between one to three grams of mushrooms total per day, and that is a very good place to be. Uh, if you are using really high doses, we do recommend reaching out to a qualified healthcare practitioner, just because you get into that more therapeutic high dose range, and everyone will respond differently, especially if you're on prescription medication or anything like that. It's always good to check with your doctor. But anything in the one to three gram range is really common. Yeah, actually, that's a really good question, right? Because people are like, if I'm stacking mushrooms, do I need to take half a dose of each or a third of a dose of take three? Um, and again, like you mentioned. Everyone will respond individually. And I have seen people take a half a dose of one mushroom and feel the full benefit. Like that is all that that person needed. So it is really just how your body responds. Well, you would say in general, and I guess it depends on the source of the mushrooms, if they're mycelated grain, if they're all fruiting body, if they're extracted, if not. But in general, with like extracted mushroom powders made from fruiting body, anywhere between one to three grams is a very common dose. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, that's a really good thing to address. I want to talk about one more stack. Uh, one of my favorite stacks that I see people using is, and we don't even have it here. Oh yeah, we do, I guess. Powder. So. I, this is like the high performance stack, I guess, or maybe the the uh, the athlete stack or something what like do you that. Need? Lion's mane and cordyceps. Yeah. So um, you know, cordyceps obviously is the energy and endurance mushroom for athletes. Lion's mane is the mushroom for cognition and focus. You put those things together, and it's kind of like the high performance stack. So I do see a lot of people that are like, no, I just want to, I don't know, I want to perform better in general right. in life, right? right. And uh, cordyceps and lion's mane together are one of the most popular ways to, to try and do that. And uh, this would be my favorite stack, I think, Cordyceps and Lion's Mane. If I had to pick only two mushrooms. A powerful duo. It's a powerful duo. Yeah, I'd say so. So, um, yeah, and again, you could take Cordyceps before your workout and Lion's Mane in your coffee, or whatever, whatever you wanted to do. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, one other thing I wanted to say, oh. it's not just mushroom stacks, right? A lot of the time people will stack different mushrooms with different supplements. So you mentioned focus, which is lion's mane, but it's stacked with? Numentix, so a uh, spearmint extract. Right, and yeah. what, so what does Numentix do? Numentix is a clinically studied spearmint extract. It's useful for increasing working memory, short-term memory, and yeah, so it'd be the brain, brain health, cognition. Right. Um, so that makes sense to stack that with something like lion's mane, yeah. right? And then you can think of, so reishi is kind of this calming, you know, kind of a calming mushroom. People often like to stack it with things that are also calming. Like, so you think like L-theanine or maybe magnesium, uh, chamomile, magnesium, chamomile yeah. all that kind of stuff. And you can mix up your own nighttime elixir or kind of relaxing adaptogenic, uh, beverage. So, yeah, I mean... And yeah, and that well, that's pretty much what we have in our focus. <laughs> right. Or our unwind, sorry. Focus. Right. Um, and there's lots of different ways we can do it and lots of different ways that people uh, will do it. And it's kind of like, you know, people stack caffeine with L-theanine, for example. That's another like pretty common non-mushroom supplement stack because you get the, you know, focus and energy benefits of caffeine with common benefits of L-theanine. They kind of cancel each other out. So, um, yeah, lots of different possible. Lots of possibilities in the natural supplement world. Yeah. Yeah. Combinations and permutations. Yep. So. Yeah. Well, I hope that's been informative. Yeah. I think, so we did talk about dose. I have it here, but we did talk about dose already. And so real quick again, what's, what's your favorite stack you said? Ooh. 
Well, I'd have to go with what I'm doing right now. So ultimate mushroom complex and cordyceps. Nice. Yeah. That's typically my go-to, but I will rotate that out with lion's mane. Uh, and then, of course, unwind, which is my pre-made nighttime stack. Nice. I almost said snack. <laughs> <laughs> you can make it into a snack. I could. Your stack snack? Stack snack. There you go. So, um, yeah, I've been digging the mushroom coffee, and that's kind of a stack in, it, in its own right. Right. Um, but actually, I dropped coffee for three months prior you to did. this. did. And now I'm back You're on it. You're recently back on. Yeah. 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 So, back at it. Cycling off. Mushroom coffee. But I had to drink coffee again because you can't do mushroom coffee without, you know, coffee. having a mushroom coffee. Yeah. So, okay. Is there anything yeah. else? Uh, I think that is that is pretty good. Nice. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And hit us up with what you want to hear about. What do you want us to talk about? Let us know. Yeah. And again, this is the weekly show. Again, it's really just a chance to connect, to talk mushroom supplements, to really uh, interact with the wider Fresh Cat community. Super happy to have you here. Anything you want us to talk about, make sure you let us know in the comments below. This show is going to be posted every Friday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. I might have said a couple different times already. So I started to get the time zones right. Uh, mushroom Coffee every Friday at 11 a.m. Mountain. And then The Mushroom Show, which is also brand new one-on-one -on -one interviews with the movers and shakers in the mushroom space every Sunday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Both of these are going to be right here on YouTube, but also on Spotify. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being part of the Fresh Cat family. We'll see you in the next episode. See you in the next episode.